second Corinthians chapter 12 verses beginning from 7 to 10 second Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 to 10 somebody can read it and others can follow it Verse 9, the second part. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Apostle Paul, the apostle of apostles, he climbed the source of his strength, the source of strength of the Lord in his life he is in his weaknesses. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. Maybe people may think about, so when you read this passage, this whole chapter, you will come to know, people began to praise his achievements in God's kingdom. Usually we receive praises, we receive a thankful heart from the people's side. But, Paul found the danger of praises from the people. That pulled him back from pushing himself forward in his mission. And so, he said that, hereafter I am not going to boast myself on my strength, but I am going to boast myself on my weaknesses. Because in my weaknesses I find the power of the Lord. Say amen. amen. The power is made perfect in weaknesses. The power is made perfect in weaknesses. That is even important. So what we are going to discuss today is the power of weaknesses. So power of weaknesses. The power of God is found in the weaknesses of human being. When we call it now weaknesses, it's not about sin, it's not our, about our foolishness, but our innocence, unknowingness, ignorance. So people call foolish to shame the wise of this world. That's what the Bible says. When we call, when we say foolish, we don't mind. The people from sinful nature are people or servant of God, those who are living in a sinful lifestyle. No, we don't claim that. But we see the weaknesses is nothing but the physical torment. Physical torment. Even Jesus had physical torment. When he met with the devil in wilderness after he has fought his fasting prayer, he was tormented by Satan. And we also see many people are being tormented by Satan. Evil spread brought to Christ and he cast them out. We have, we, uh, we have a good example in the time of Jesus Christ. In Gospel according to Matthew, in Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. Somebody can read from girl's side, louder. 
Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. Mark. Did I say Mark, Matthew? Oh, okay. So, now it's changed. Mark. Fine. Come on. So, in this passage, disciples ran up to Jesus Christ privately to ask a question, why couldn't we cast out this demon? Because before they met with Jesus, they had a test, an internship. An internship. They, they, were, uh, they were studying what? Bible college. Who was the teacher? Christ himself was the teacher. Uh, how many, uh, what was the strength of his Bible college? Twelve. Only twelve. And sometime they, they were put into practice. So people came up to him and praised him. Wow, how grace and how blessed to be the disciple of Jesus Christ. You also have power. Why don't you come and cast out demons? And they all went with happily. Okay, we are going to cast out what? Demons. All, the, all of them went. Left Jesus and they went to start their own ministries. Thinking that they have power to cast out all the, the demons. And they tried. Instead of they cast out the demons, demon cast them all out. And they ran up to Jesus Christ. Baba, kya ho ra hai? <laughs> Mera paas kya hai? Sachi, Sachi, Parmashwar ka vajan hai, Vishwas hai, sab kuch hai. So, but we couldn't do that. So, privately they came and asked. Jesus said plainly, this kind cannot be cast out by nothing. 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 This kind cannot be cast out by nothing. Place your full stop there. Nothing. You thought that you became a disciple of son of man. So you all came out. Even you didn't inform me that we are past, uh, pastor, we are going for ministry. Master, we are going for ministry. We are going to, go to cast out demons. They didn't inform even Jesus, but they went privately and did ministry privately without the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's the reason they also met Jesus in private. Do you understand? And Jesus said, you can, never, you can never do this. You can never do this, but by nothing. When you find yourself for nothing, that you find the power of the Lord. When you become or when you make yourself nothing, that you find the work of the Lord. The work of the Lord is always found in nothing. When Jesus created or when God created heavens and earth, the Bible says there was nothing. Say Amen. amen. So where do you find the power of the Lord? In the state of nothing. We have so many Zagurus here in our India. They also teach the same thing. An a, a, a young girl asks Zagru. So what is the bliss? of mind in human being he beautifully states in English he speaks beautiful English than God's people he knows everything and he states that you will find bliss of your mind in nothing in loneliness same thing he is also teaching but if you follow that thing you will be occupied by all the spirits evil spirits available on the earth. Do you understand? Do you understand? But Jesus is speaking something more, something different. So he says, it can be done by fasting and prayer, or prayer and fasting. What happens when you pray and fast? You are filled by the good spirit, the spirit of God. You become nothing but you 
uh, you are filled by the spirit of God. Say amen. amen. That is the reason Apostle Paul was telling that I find my power. I find the power of God in my ministry in my weaknesses. Thrice he prayed unto God, why don't you take away this tormentation in my life? The pain, the weaknesses. He evaluated himself. He evaluated himself. I can do much thing with these weaknesses. If God removes these weaknesses from my, so how much more I can accomplish for my God's kingdom? But Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. So do not pray again to remove your torment of your flesh allowed by Spirit of God because that weaknesses, that nothingness prepares you to accumulate the mighty power of God in your life. Say Amen. amen. So the lesson that we learn from this passage today is nothing but nothingness presenting ourselves and nothing in the presence of God so that he can fill us with his mighty power. So, amen. Okay. See, verse 7, he says, a messenger of Satan. This statement clearly helps us to understand that he is having a torment from Satan. He is always having disturbance from Satan. He says clearly, so that I will not boast on my flesh. I have a torment in my body. I have a temptation in my ministry. I have an enemy within me. That is very important. I have an enemy within me so that I will not boast on myself, but rather I will boast in the strength of the Lord. Of course, I tried thrice so that I will be relieved completely on this earth. But Jesus said, God said, why don't you ask for that? Since my grace is sufficient for you. Why do you ask for that? Since my strength is sufficient for you. Why do you ask for that? Since my power is imperfect in your life. The, the path that we can get, his power in perfect mode is nothing but in his presence making ourselves uh, nothing when you come to say I am nothing Lord I forgot myself when you realize you are alive when you realize that you have nothing to boast on there comes the power of the Lord say amen, amen. say amen, amen. So, even the disciples of Jesus Christ could do mighty things not when Jesus was with, with them, but when they realized, okay, we are going to do nothing anymore. My master is gone. Now we are going back to our job. They began to realize, I am nothing. And then God began to make them to understand Hey Baba, your power is not in your strength. Your power is in your weaknesses. That is the reason God chose the people in weaknesses. So that his name will be manifested in a great, man great manner. Say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, my grace is sufficient to those who are weakness. My grace is sufficient to those who are humble. My grace is sufficient to those who completely rely on God's guidance, in His guidance. Not putting forth your will, of, your will. not putting forth your vision, not putting forth your desires and ministry. Probably we may begin our call and ministry according to the God's will in the beginning. What is happening when you begin to grow in God's ministry? Slowly we begin to, we are tempted to put our will and our desire 
to be accomplished in God's ministry. There we find failure, utter failure. I do not know you heard about Robert E. Nobley. He came as a, as a missionary to Madurai and he studied all the, uh, uh, all the religious uh, uh, beliefs and customs of Tamil Nadu, even some of India. And he chose a mode of giving, a mode of ministry as that is called indigenous ministry. Indigenous ministry. Indigenous theology. You will, may, you will be studying us. Indigenous ministry he chose. What is that indigenous ministry? Giving the gospel in the style of native culture. He changed his dress code. He just became like a Sai Baba. Do you understand? He changed his appearance like a Swamiji. He, uh, he, he smashed this, uh, what do you call it, the horn? Ash. Like a Hindu priest, he uh, presented himself to the people in Madurai. And he began to talk to people from the gospel in the language of local culture. He renounced non -vigi. He renounced uh, uh, all the, uh, all the uh, habits uh, of uh, common people. And he sat himself in a small hut, started saying that I'm going to reach the whole nation by this mode of ministry. He didn't, re he didn't reach even one single soul in his lifetime. Because he put his knowledge, he put his style, a mode of ministry and he failed. In the Indian Christian history, his ministry alone is the great failure mode of ministry. Do you understand what I'm speaking about? So you may be put into any culture, you may be sent to any part of this world, but make sure that you make yourself nothing in his presence and attain the power of Holy Spirit and he gives you knowledge and power every day in the path you must go. Do you understand what I'm speaking about? So because without his power we can do nothing. That is the reason Joel, book in the book of Joel chapter 3 verse 10 says, let the weak say I am strong. In the sight of the Lord, the strength of the people, those who are in strong, found those who are weakness in their physique, physique, in their life on the earth. When they find themselves in weaknesses, in nothing, there you will find my strength. Where do you find the strength of the Lord? Nowhere else in the state of your nothingness. Last time when I shared with you, I talked about the humbleness, how lowly Jesus Christ humbled himself for the sake of human being. And now we talk about the power and the benefits of being in weaknesses. Again, I want to state that weaknesses, I mean, is not living in sin, but physical weaknesses situational weaknesses, ignorance. But God is able to use powerfully when you find yourself in weaknesses. So say amen. Because this is a mode Jesus chose. Jesus chose the disciples of the multitude. He chose the twelve. The twelve they chose. <coughs> And people despise them. You people, you group, group of illiterates, they were not well educated. They were not trained enough to be preachers. Take uh, Peter, for example. He is not well trained. He doesn't know how to start a sermon and how to finish a sermon. He can only speak what he heard. When we listen to the message of Peter, uh, in the book of Acts, 
we see he just says what he what he knew about the history this happened in the life of the israelites and we received uh, messiah he came up to here to meet us to he dwelled among us now you see you killed him you people killed him crucified him now he is rose again this is the message a simple message yeah, anyone can preach it but he realized to himself was nothing he can do for the kingdom of god god made him a powerful apostle among all the apostles say amen so here is a message for all of us to this morning so this kind or this kind of problem or this kind of achievements can be done only by nothing but the power of our god where do we find power of god where the power of god is made perfect in weaknesses do you understand what i'm speaking about so you don't have to look for the great uh, illumination or revelation or anything but when you humble yourself make yourself nothing in the sight of the lord he begins to prepare you and fills you with the power of the lord shall we all stand up in our feet and look to the lord in prayer we stop murmuring on our weaknesses let's stop murmuring or complaining to the law about our uh, inability in our lives so so that he can fill us with his power shall we close our eyes shall we close our eyes i look to the lord in prayer take a moment in his presence take a moment in a presence and he can make us nothing he can make us to boast on nothing but the strength of the lord we can do nothing without him even jesus said that you can do nothing without me without the power of the lord that you experience in your life you can do nothing you can do nothing but you can do nothing with the power of the lord so that because god fills the weaknesses with his power so apostle paul prayed thrice why don't you remove my torment in my body why don't you remove this harsh time in my ministries so that i can do much more better in your kingdom but jesus said i don't want that i just want you to be in nothing i want i just want to see you found in weaknesses because in weaknesses alone i can fill you with the power of the lord heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful time of meditating on you thank you for the people who listen to this message in this morning we pray for the entire community living here and uh, putting their life towards uh, learning your word lord jesus father god thank you for being good to us for the past days Uh, thank you for giving us good uh, strength thank you for giving us a new awakening in your word lord jesus and now we commit uh, entire community into your hand so we don't complain or we don't murmur on the situation the time of harsh or in the time of torment but rather we will rely on you completely so that we will experience the power of you in our lives lord jesus Your word clearly says that the power is made perfect in weaknesses. Let your power is made uh, perfect in our lives, Lord Jesus, so that we can do something greater in your vineyard, Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for how uh, you are going to help us in the days to come so that we will shine in your ministry. Thank you so much once again. In Jesus' name we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.